Greetings and salutations. I'm Ricky R. Levon, facilitator and teacher of the Men's Bible Study at the Worthington SDA Church, located on 385 East Dublin Granville Road, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. That information will be in the description. And we meet in the garden room at the church on the first and third Tuesdays of the month from 6.45 p.m. until 8. For a copy of the latest biblical study or to keep track of our progress, please visit the website at www.lavari.com slash men bible study um, a link is in the description as well and we also send out emails for the latest information if you want to be a part of that please email me at rick r-i-c-k lavon l-a-v-a-u-g-h-n at yahoo.com uh, in this video we'll cover a few just a few main points from prelude to greatness lesson three the reason for ministry and for this lesson we had to do things a little differently it's a bit long and we only ha got to question 10 but there's 17 of them so in the next lesson we'll just cover the rest well, which is okay and sometimes that happens while we're covering a subject and want to take our time the first point comes from question three and it reads as a word of encouragement what is something that God cannot do the scripture connected to this question is from Titus chapter 1 verse 2 Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 and Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Now instead of going through all of those scriptures, I'll just read from Titus. And it says, In the hope of eternal life that God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. The key statement from that verse is God does not lie. In Hebrews and Numbers, the same thought is given in both. Two things immediately come to mind. First, what joy can we have in knowing this? And actually that idea is a part of the next question from question four from the book. But to have the reality that God can not lie. It didn't say that God wouldn't lie, but that he can't. And this sentiment is replayed once again in both Hebrews and in Numbers. God can not lie. Let me repeat. God cannot lie. This means that when God states something in your life, it will come to pass. He already knows that it will. So him stating it is a matter of just letting us know what he's already promised and seen. Right now, I want you to think about the various promises that God has stated in your life. The multiple times that the Lord said something will happen. And often we get nervous like Rachel, Abraham, Moses, and so many others and try to do things our way. We have an understanding of God's will and figure to, oh, I don't know, push it along. This, in some cases, does not work out the way that we want it. For example, look back at Rachel, Abraham, and also in Moses. But nevertheless, God's plan still and will happen. If you're ever in a tough situation, going through a struggle, then remember Titus, remember in Hebrews, remember in the book of Numbers, save them, write them down, have it marked in a Bible app, or do what you must to remember that God does not lie. Because of this, it means the promise that he has stated or your in your life will come to fruition. Now, the second thing that came to mind was, why did Paul state this at the beginning of his letter to Titus? When reading the entire chapter, Paul starts by stating his position with God. Makes sense. Then immediately goes into reminding Titus that God does not lie. And it is in him that we have our hope. Now while going through, we were speculating, the guys at the men's Bible study, that Titus must have been going through some tough times. Probably the reason for the letter, but Paul's goal was to encourage the young minister as well. When going through a ministry, and I'm talking to us, we sometimes believe that things will work out um, with ease. That as soon as you're working and you're calling that 
and that life will be a breeze and that it will just move through existence pretty much like a gentle wind but in reality there could be times of storms of gale force winds tornado like situations and hurricanes that spring up while we're working for the Lord Paul started this letter to Titus before going into anything else to remind him that God has your back he is the center for the young man's hope and that God does not lie there is a purpose for his ministry and living in it means being on the path that God desires the same goes for us no matter what we are going through our hope has to be in God and that hope is not founded in nothing it is founded and structured and planted and grounded in the fact that God cannot lie never forget and if you're going through remember these verses I'm going to say them again so bring out something write them down and go over them it is Titus chapter 1 verse 2 Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 and in the book of Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 in all three it places emphasis that God cannot lie now the last point comes from question 6 and it says what mission was given to Titus while in Crete the answer is found in Titus chapter 1 verse 5 the scripture states the reason I left you in Crete was to set right what was left undone and as I directed you to appoint elders in every town. This like the previous statement has two basic ideas. The first one being to set right or correct what was left undone. Now, Obviously the church was started before Titus was there. We expect it uh, from Paul and others like other ministers are with Paul now from there things got a little away from what Paul had preached and set up in Crete hence the reason for this letter and that is one thing to remember when Paul wrote these letters or epistles as they're called they were going to people um, in the case of Timothy Titus and Philemon or to churches like in Ephesians Corinthians Thessalonians and more in all these cases, it meant that someone or something had gone wrong. They had skewed away from what Paul had taught and a correction was necessary. We don't like to think of it that way, but that is the truth. Paul saw or heard of an issue and wanted to encourage the people to fall in line with what Jesus had implemented and taught through his servant and disciple. Now, think about that. When reading parts of the New Testament and you see various sins and issues mentioned, this is because that was going on in the church. Grant society was going through their own issues, but Paul wanted to make sure that those in the church, those who represented Jesus Christ, would set a standard that reverberated through the city, state, town, country, or region in which they resided. This same idea goes for us as well. When reading the Bible, it's not a manual on what to look for in the world and chastise them. Nope. The Bible is meant to be a tool of allowing God's love to reflect our own issues and inadequacies so that change can be made. Then while we're evolving, we can be a representative for God to the part of the society that we currently reside in in hopes that they will too will experience a taste of Christ's love in their own lives. Another part of that message, second part, was about appointing leaders. Now Paul wanted Titus to ensure that the right people were being placed in leadership positions. This was key. But the wrong people means that things can and will go terribly wrong. In Titus chapter 1 verses 6 through 9, goes into detail in what should and should not be um, in a person while they're being a leader for the church. Now please read that um, for more detail, obviously as you're going through the lesson. And also, this is a men's Bible study, so for men, um, we want to make sure that we have the proper characteristics that God desires from us. Why? 
because we want to make sure that when we're representing God we're doing it in a way that represents him in the way that he wants and desires everyone is called to be great everyone is called to be a leader of some sort in some fashion to someone the only question is timing and to whom we will reveal this side of ourselves read those verses in Titus verse again is from chapter 1 and as from verses 6 through 9 read it and really go through to see what might be lacking or present in your own life those four verses cover questions um, 7 through 9 from the book prelude to greatness lesson 3 let us all be who God wants us to be and make a positive change in society today that's it for part one of this lesson please join us for the next which is the second half of lesson three from prelude to greatness the reason for ministry continue reading titus chapter one visit the website at lavari.com slash men bible study thank you for your support if you want to be on this email list please contact me at rick Levon at yahoo rick Levon at yahoo.com how to make sure i get that correct be blessed and i look forward to studying with you soon